Greetings my friends! Welcome to another in my series of realistic railway recreations made using Transport Fever 2. This time we're starting off on a train that's arriving at Amersham Station and after that we will go into the sidings, reverse and run back fast to Harrow on the Hill. Amersham Station was built in 1892 as part of the Met's huge extension into Buckinghamshire to link up with the Aylesbury and Buckingham Railway that they had just acquired. The old town of Amersham lies some 200 feet or 60 metres below us in the lovely valley of the River Misbourne, but to have routed the railway there would have meant dropping down to it and then a steep climb back up because all the land further west of it was a private estate called Chardelot's and its 18th century grand house is still there. So the railway was built in what was then called Amersham Common but as houses and shops came here it became known as Amersham on the Hill and it's a, a pleasing irony that at Harrow where the original town was on the hill and the station below the station was called Harrow on the Hill. But here, where the station um, is situated on a hill, while the town is below, it's just called Amersham. Amersham is 22 miles or 35 kilometres in a straight line from Baker Street. The end of the line used to be at Verney Junction, 23 miles or 37 kilometres further on. So what is now the end of the line was originally just the halfway point. We've arrived at Amersham and of course this is where all passengers would be required to leave the train. Before we go into the sidings, a very quick change there. Until 1961, the Met, even though it was part of London transport, ran steam trains on from here up to Aylesbury, whilst British Rail operated the old Great Central route via Aylesbury to Nottingham. But in that year, the line was electrified up to Amersham and London Transport opted not to electrify any further on the grounds of cost. They also ceased using steam. And as the Met has never used diesels, the consequence was that Amersham became a terminus and the sidings that our train is just pulling into were built at that time. British Rail continued to run services from Marylebone to the Midlands and the North by steam for a few years. Uh, today, of course, those services are operated by diesel multiple units uh, by Chiltern lines, but they go no further than Aylesbury or Aylesbury Parkway, to be precise. Right, we're leaving the sidings. Let me change the point of view to the front of the cab, which I always hit the wrong key to do that first and we're putting back into Amersham station unfortunately we can't see uh, Amersham Old Town from here it's it's now across to our right but it's a fascinating place it has some excellent old coaching inns and the river runs right through the center of the town this is of course the new town Amersham on the hill as it used to be called, I'm not sure if it still is. And the development carries on to the north of us, which is to our left, and these days reaches almost the whole way to the southern suburbs of Chesham. They've become one big conglomeration.
the old uh, Amersham sidings where there was a goods yard of course are inevitably now a car park that we're looking at here uh, and there is one remnant of the original sidings from the days of steam here uh, I don't think it's used anymore so I've used old track to depict it And here is where the single track line from Chesham joins us and continues in parallel until Chalfont and Latimer Station. Speaking of Chalfont and Latimer, there was nothing here at all but a couple of farms when the railway came and the station was originally called Chalfont Road uh, because uh, Chalfont St Giles was two and a half miles away and Chalfont St Peter was four miles away. They really should have called it Cheneys and Latimer after the two delightful old villages in the valley of the River Chess which are both much nearer than any of the Chalfonts. But of course, a new suburb has sprung up around the station, which is called Little Chalfont. Although, judging by the size of it, they really should call it Big Chalfont, or maybe Chalfont Magna, or New Chalfont, or even Chalfont on the Hill. To our left, the bay platform that was originally used by the, the Chesham Shuttle but uh, the Metropolitan Line no longer runs shuttle trains, all the Chesham trains run on the main line. I'm recording this video in late November, the season of leaf fall, and the Metropolitan usually has a revised timetable for this time of the year to allow trains an extra few minutes on these sections which are heavily wooded. And the leaves can cause a real problem if you get a lot of leaves falling on the tracks or between the tracks and the sleepers, they turn to a thick, uh, sort of sticky mulch and the rails the the wheels of the trains can actually slip and i think it can also damage braking systems and the metropolitan employs a couple of old uh, of retired trains called the rail adhesion trains which have special equipment to clean the track and remove the build-up of leaves but we won't be seeing any of them on this trip because uh, I don't have a model for them
Chorleywood Common is the huge open space to our left and we're now coming into Chorleywood Station. Passing one of the ghost bridges, which no longer connects anything. Whitmansworth North sidings to our left. Lovely old water tower to our right that we've just passed and we come into Rickmansworth Station which is uh, these days entirely surrounded by car parks and flats. Centre of Rickmansworth is in that direction. You can see the church tower and you walk down that street to get to the high street. And we've got the Rickmansworth South sidings. In the days of steam, this is where um, the electric locomotives would wait to take the trains on to London, having decoupled the steam engines. And they still stable trains here on these sidings. There's a direct connection to the Watford branch coming up. It's called the North Curve. but it is not used by normal trains.
Valley of the River Colne to our right and here is the connection to the Watford branch, the South Curve as we cross over the Grand Union Canal And because this is a fast train, our stop at Moor Park will be the last stop before Harrow. It's a Watford bound train there. No, nope, talking rubbish, train that's come from Watford. <laughs> of course, a slow train that we will overtake very shortly. I've covered this section of the route on earlier videos, so I'm not really going to say much about it now.
and now as we approach North Harrow Station, dead ahead of us you can see the spire of St Mary's Church, great landmark of Middlesex. And now we will switch off the main track or the fast track and onto the slow tracks. Because all Metropolitan Line trains heading southbound, whether they are fast or slow, must use either platforms 5 or 6 at Harrow. and there's nothing occupying platform six so we're coming straight in had there been the uh, program would have switched us on to uh, platform five this use of alternate platforms is a, is a relatively new feature in transport fever which i'm still playing with anyway that's the end of our journey i hope you've enjoyed it uh, if you have please leave me a like please leave me a friendly comment and remember to subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with whatever it is I do in the future. Thank you. Goodbye.